Babysitters of Reddit, what were the weirdest rules parents asked you to follow? I was told that the only thing she specifically wasn't allowed to do was eat a bowl of sugar. I mean, babysitter or not, this is just good advice. I wouldn't want to be the person consuming 150% daily value of the sugar intake. I had to change the kid's cloth diaper every two hours on the dot. The kid was six. I assumed it was for some sort of disability or something, but no. His parents just didn't want to potty train him, and the kid was content with being babied. I remember just making the kid put his own diaper on and encouraged him to use the bathroom if he had to go. I never went back. I had to put the kids to sleep with the CD player going. That wasn't the weird part. It was a recording of their parents basically going, Molly, you are wonderful. You are a star. You're going to shine bright. That isn't super weird, but it was like several hours long, and apparently they listened to it every night. Yes, I have someone watching my turtle while I'm on vacation over Christmas. As a joke, I printed out the daily affirmations, you are the best turtle, your turtle shell brings all the boys to the yard, etc., and said she has to read them to Tammy every day. My friend did not find me funny. No hot sauce after 9 p.m. To give some context, the kid loved hot sauce, but his folks were super overprotective. Maybe they had heard of people eating too much hot sauce and throwing up as it would not settle? Honestly, the kid was made of solid steel. We went to Taco Bell pretty much every time I babysat. My mom told me a story of when she had to babysit during her teenage years. She did it for this religious family whose church did not believe in television or their members watching it. She would bring a portable TV with her to watch once the kids were asleep. The parents came home, and they were captivated by it. They would invite her over just so they could watch television. Not necessarily a rule, but the first time I went to their house, they told me about their daughter's very serious peanut allergy. Walk me through the EpiPen, prevention, phone numbers of their neighbors who were doctors, all fine so far. I took this very seriously. But then the mother put her hands on my shoulders and said, If she dies, we wouldn't blame you. It wouldn't be your fault. While I appreciate the thought, this freaked me out, and I was a hundred times less comfortable. This has the same energy as going up to someone and just saying, it's not your fault, it's not your fault, over and over, to the point where it seems less like a reassurance and more of driving them crazy. Asked me to drive their three-year-old twins around in my personal vehicle for two and a half hours because, quote, that's the only way they can nap. No. I simply put the kids in their beds, closed the door, and they were asleep in 15 minutes. Not a rule, but a single mom once told me to use the bat by the door in the event the kid's father comes by and tries to take them. That was pretty weird and uncomfortable. Hippie family. The two-year-old had no bedtime and no rules. Quote, she can eat what she wants, no bedtime, and if she falls asleep, leave her wherever she crashed. The parents came home at 2.30 to a toddler eating chocolate cake on the couch with their preferred American pickers on TV. That's fine, apparently. Six months later, the mom is very pregnant and asks that when the baby is born, if I could wrangle the toddler while the mom gives birth in a bathtub at home. The two-year-old was to be in the room watching while I explain what's happening. I left that evening when the parents came home, fried chicken in the toddler's hand, keeping up with the Kardashians on TV, and denied their next request to come sit. As a 20-year-old, I wasn't prepared to see the mess of someone else's home birth. Lady, I'm a babysitter, not an RN. Ask someone else. I used to babysit for this family when I was in high school, in the 80s, and they had no books or reading material of any kind, except that there would usually be like two sections of the Wall Street Journal and a running magazine lying around. No books. Anyway, once I went over there and the mom told me like nine times, begged me not to eat the box of Nilla wafers that was in the cupboard because she needed them for a recipe the next day. Begged. I was like, okay, got it. They're totally safe because I don't even like vanilla wafers. She kept mentioning it and it was the first thing she asked about when they got home. Can't believe it. This woman got the Nilla wafers. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the family gave me instructions to let their kids drink chocolate milk, which they were otherwise not allowed to have. I think they wanted their kids to associate babysitter time with fun time, so the parents could go out more often. Seemed to work out well for them. The kids both grew up to be successful people. To give him warm milk in a baby bottle right after every dinner. He was a fully functional 10-year-old boy. 
Edit, to answer some of the questions, yes, he was fine with it. His parents were otherwise normal, as far as I saw. The kid himself was great. His teeth seemed fine from what I could remember. Not that I really would have paid attention to that back then, but I just found him on Facebook, and it looks like he did have braces around 14 to 15 years old. If Brady stands by the door, it just means he needs to go out, open the door, and let him back inside in a few minutes. Brady was a four-year-old boy. OP, are you sure? Are you really sure that you weren't dog-sitting at the time? That might have actually been my mom and little brother. When my brother was three to four, he was learning to pee like a big boy in the big boy potty. Well, mom turned away for a second to do something, and my brother must have nudged the toilet lid or something because it came down and smooshed his boy parts. He was terrified of the toilet for a year. He told everyone that, quote, Everybody busy! <laughs> and he refused to use anything resembling a toilet that year. Mom didn't want him to regress back to diapers, so she let him pee off the back porch and convinced him to poop in a little kid's training potty. He refused to pee in it, though. I'm sure anyone that babysat us during that time was confused and concerned. If you like what you're hearing, remember to hit subscribe and check out Am I the Jerk, linked in the description below. Thanks for watching! The mom had me put her kids in their car seats and sit in the driveway with all the car doors open while she just hung out inside the house. Five hours of me standing in the driveway, watching them sit inside their car. Never returned. Edit, I meant to say I never returned to babysit for her again, not that the mother mysteriously disappeared. <sighs> As for people asking why I didn't take them somewhere, she specifically asked me to just sit in the driveway with them. I also didn't have my driver's license yet, so I couldn't have taken them anywhere, even if I wanted to. The kids were twins who were four years old, I think. They were weirdly, weirdly well-behaved and didn't complain about what we were doing. To this day, I have no idea what she was doing inside or why she didn't just let them play in the yard. I am just as confused as you. Oh my god, thanks for asking because you reminded me of a weird thing. The three-year-old daughter had to watch this VHS tape of a live Fleetwood Mac concert before bed. I was like, okay, cute, that's adorable. Three-year-olds love the weirdest things, she's so quirky, and this will be fun. But she didn't love it. She always wanted to watch Land Before Time instead, but it was always on the note left for me. Like, pager number, pediatrician, chicken soup for dinner is in the fridge, and watch Fleetwood Mac at 6.30 before bed. Obviously, the family eventually found out I wasn't making her watch it, as I had no freaking reason to believe it was a secret. They were clearly upset by this, and I was never called back to babysit. So that was weird. Wasn't a rule, but on my first day, they sent over an adult male friend of theirs who asked to come in. I said no, and was then told I was being tested and I had passed. This reminds me of the time my dad called our house phone when I was 8 or 9. My parents had gone to the movies, and my 15-year-old sister was in charge of watching my brother and I. He called the house, and I picked up, and he said in a weird voice, Hey, little girl, is your mommy or daddy home? And I told him, No, they went to the movies. And he said, Oh, okay, well, I'm a friend of your dad's, and he wanted me to drop something off, but I don't have your address. Will you give it to me? And I started to spit our address out like it was nothing. And in the middle of me saying the street we lived in, my dad yelled, No, that's so, Caitlin. No, you never, ever give out your address to anyone on the phone if you don't know them. He had called to see how things were going and just figured he'd see what I would do if he pretended to be a stranger asking where I lived. So anyways, I failed his test, but learned a great lesson. When I was about 14, some friends of my parents asked me to babysit their 9 or 10 year old son who wanted a boy babysitter. When I got to their house, the mom told me that her son loved poached eggs and asked me to make him a poached egg on toast for dinner. She quickly explained to me how to make it as if it were something really simple and easy. Later that night, after wasting half of their eggs in a hopeless effort to make a poached egg, I asked the kid if he liked scrambled eggs. He said he loved scrambled eggs and ate them without complaint. When the parents came home, I apologized for using up their eggs. They laughed and seemed to appreciate the effort, although the mom explained it again and insisted that it was really simple. I'm almost 40 now, and I still suck at making poached eggs, and it cracks me up that the mom thought a 14-year-old should be able to whip one up based on a few instructions. On the other hand, as a parent, I appreciate the heck out of that kid. Edit. Wow, I love that this has brought out so many good egg poaching tips. Now I need suggestions for hollandaise. Immersion Blender. Immersion Blender solves everything. Only two hours of reading time. 
To be fair, the mom was a librarian and her two kids were adorably nerdy. They had an entire room filled with books, and even then we'd make trips to the library from time to time. The rest of the time was supposed to be outside or doing some activity. It was a super sweet deal too, because she paid not only for her kids to have a pool pass, but me as well. So we basically went every day all summer, and we would play in the pool. One had me feed her one-year-old only from a freshly opened baby food container. If she only ate two or three spoonfuls, I was to throw it away, and when she wanted more in 15 minutes, I was to open a new one. I thought it was so she would finish her meal and be full for a while, but she said it was okay to feed her every time she wanted it. I would probably throw away five or six jars in a two-hour sitting. They cost more than I usually made for sitting. Time for a babysitter horror story. Babysat for a woman who knew my mom. She had two kids, both acted like feral animals, kicked and bit me very hard when I told them no. She had her TV behind a plexiglass thing because they keep breaking TVs. She had locks on the outside of the bedroom door and crib set up that essentially locked the younger kid, three or four years old, into her crib. It had a top that you pulled down and padlocked the sides. It was absolutely horrific. The kids screamed bloody murder when I tried to get them to listen. Their grandma who lived next door came over. Did she come over to help me out? No, she gave these kids cookies and crap talked me for not being able to control them. Like it's my fault that her grandkids act like animals and not the fact that their mother apparently treats them like animals and she herself gives them treats when they have temper tantrums instead of putting them in time out like a normal person. Their mom promised to be back by 9, important because I was in high school. She wasn't back until 2 a.m. and that was after I started calling all the bars to find her. I was planning to eat dinner afterwards so I was starving. I called my mom and she ordered delivery for me. The grandmother got angry that she didn't order enough for the kids too and guilted me into sharing it. The mom finally came home, paid me $10 for 10 hours of babysitting, even though we agreed on $20 for 5 hours, and she proceeded to crap talk me next time she went out, saying I was lazy and a bad babysitter. She said I should have beat their butts and locked them in the bedroom when they started acting up. Edit, my mom and I contacted Child Protective Services afterwards a few times. Unfortunately, nothing came of it. Where I live, they give people 24 hours notice before inspecting a house, so I'm sure she was able to hide whatever, or they just gave her a warning, I don't know. I never babysat there again. Not a babysitter, but my friend was 24 and his parents asked him to watch their house while they were gone. They left a list of rules and instructions. It was on a laminated paper and looked like something for a 10 year old. He was not allowed to answer the door and if someone kept knocking, he was to call the cops. The mother asked me to stop by the house to meet her two-year-old son a week before I was supposed to babysit him for the first time. I pulled up to the house and saw that the young boy was standing at the glass front door with a t-shirt on and nothing else. I go in and I must have given the child a strange look because the mom started to explain that her son doesn't like to wear pants, so they let him run around pantsless with no diaper on, though he isn't potty trained. I told her that this made me uncomfortable and asked if I could put pants on him when I was watching him and she got upset with me and said that they don't like to make their two-year-old son do anything he doesn't like to do, so they let him run around without pants on, which unfortunately means he goes to the bathroom on the floor since he won't wear a diaper and he isn't potty trained. Not a rule as I only went there once, but a very odd request. I used to work housekeeping at a hospital. A doctor that was frequently on the floor that I worked on asked me if I could watch his kids on Saturdays. He had three toddlers, ages 2, 3, and 4. His wife didn't work, but wanted time to go shopping and get her hair and nails done. I totally understand, as my son was 4. I was also allowed to bring him. I get there early as the doctor is getting ready to leave. He says he's cooking breakfast, and while he gets the kids fed and dressed, could I help change his wife's tampon? She drunk a lot the night before, and was completely passed out and was leaking and messing up their sheets. He's a doctor! I told him I should work for someone more than a few minutes before I go rummaging in their private parts and that I'd tend to the kids if he tended to his wife. What I really wanted to do was leave, but the kids would be home alone with their hungover mother, so I chose to finish cooking and stay. He went upstairs and sent the kids to the kitchen, where I was putting food on plates. After a little while, he popped his head in and said it was a short day. He was done upstairs and he was leaving. I never met the wife. He came home at noon, gave me $100 and I never spoke to him again. One woman I found through care.com was just generally pretty weird. Some of the weirder things were, 
only let the kids have three spoonfuls of peanut butter each. The boy might want to throw softballs at me. Just try to catch them to avoid getting hit. Also, if he doesn't want to brush his teeth, just hold him down and do it for him, even if he's screaming. Also, both times I babysat, she didn't tell me when she'd be home and didn't show up until the middle of the night totally wasted. The first time she forgot to pay me and I was too nervous to say anything, so she had me pick cash up from her mailbox later in the week. She shorted me $5. The kids screamed, hit, fought, and made messes the whole time and wanted me to chase them around the yard with sticks. I did not. I also stopped going there. Get ready for a creepy story. I was 13 and was babysitting my neighbor's kids. It was my first time, so the parents walked me through all the rules about the bathroom and TV and food and bedtime, etc. Just as the parents were taking off for the night, the mom came back in and whispered to me, don't go into the basement. As a teenager in the 80s, my mind went to all of the scariest movies that had basements. I avoided the door to the basement all night until I had put the kids to bed. Then, I walked slowly to the door and put my ear against it. I heard what sounded like whimpering. And then, it sounded like sad laughing. I ran to the couch and started watching TV to get my mind off of it, but then I heard something fall in the basement and knew someone was down there. I really don't know how I got the courage slash stupidity to do it, but I went over and opened the door. The whining instantly got louder. I went down just three or four stairs so I could peek down, and I saw a goat. Not a ghost, a goat. As soon as the goat saw me, he started bleeding loudly. It scared the crap out of me. I went upstairs and the goat was still bleeding loudly. So much that it woke up the kids. The oldest girl came out and said, Did you open the door to the basement? I said, Yeah, why? She said, When you do that, Carlos thinks you're going to feed him and he starts yelling. Thank God I knew it was a goat first, because if she had said that before I went down, I would have thought Carlos was some kidnapped person in the basement who would yell for food. It became very funny to me. The mom came home and I told her what happened and she almost died of laughing. They were repairing the goat pen and had to keep him in the basement for a few days. I still remember every moment of that night vividly. Edit, since a lot of people were asking, I think she told me not to go into the basement that way either to mess with me or she was so used to telling her daughters not to go down there that she didn't even think of how creepy it would sound to someone else. I bet that goat was probably driving her crazy over the last week. I never really had any rules to follow, but I did have one terrible mother. The mom asked me to babysit her three kids overnight. As I was in high school, I couldn't do it, so she said she could be back by 9pm. I figured it was fine and let my mom know, even though they only lived a few houses away. The kids were great. We played around, watched a movie, I fed them and put them to bed. 9pm rolls around and the mom was nowhere to be found. She hadn't left a number to reach her, and I figured she was just running behind. I cleaned up and watched some TV while waiting for her. 10 p.m. hits, not home. 11 p.m., nope. Finally, at around 12 a.m., I call my mom. I explain what's up, that I'm tired and have school in the morning, etc. She agrees to come and stay at the house with the kids till their mom shows up. Turns out, she didn't come home until around 10 a.m. the next morning, long after my mom had called Child Protective Services. She gave my mom $20 for 16 hours of babysitting. None of the neighborhood kids were allowed to babysit for her after that. When I was a kid, I got paid $75 a week to watch two boys over a summer. It was amazing money, but the dad was a big bow hunter, and he made loads of deer chili, and he insisted that his 10-year-old and 2-year-old eat tons of it. They loved it, but the 2-year-old would take these massive, awful, horrible, nasty chili dumps constantly. The dad explained all this to me, and my instructions were to just put him in the shower and hose him down. I was offered plenty of chili, but never ate any. I was babysitting a 3-4-ish to four -ish year old girl and an 18-month boy. The boy had to be carried in a buggy, which is all very well, but I was supposed to add some kind of mini stairs, two steps on the back of it, so the girl could stand on it because her legs get tired, said parents while making quotation marks with their fingers. The darn thing hit my legs every time I took a step. That kid was also taught to not wait and look for restrooms when she needed to go and proceeded one time to take a dump in a public garden and wipe herself with a leaf with an ease that certified me that wasn't her first time. 
When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot linked in the description too. Either way, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you guys next time.